And right now, we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Shanali Basic. We're counting you down to the closing bell. And here to help take us beyond the bell, it's a global simulcast. We're joined by Scarlett Fu here in Bloomberg TV Studio One. Tim Senevic and Carol Masser in our radio booth as we welcome our audiences across all of our platforms here on this Monday afternoon. Carol, a mixed bag in the yeah. markets, but similar to what we saw on Friday, Carol, we had kind of stocks in the red all day, but as you got closer to those bells, bids started to come in. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see some buying on a day when we got some weak factory data. We're going to get a lot of weak uh, data throughout the week. We did see, though, I think what's interesting is the fixed income side of things, the U.S. Treasury trade and yields really backing off in today's session. Yeah, also saw oil move lower, thanks to a surprise move from OPEC+. Plus. But, Scarlett, I mean, we spent a lot of our program talking about what's going on with GameStop. That's a little different than last week. <laughs> yeah, I really liked what Shanali Basak was asking our guest earlier, which is the return of meme stocks. I mean, what does that say about retail participation and whether uh, this idea that the rally, you know, maybe nearing its peak or maybe has a lot mm. more room to go with all this participation? I love how much of a team we work like right now because, yes, we watch those retail traders. Bailey Lipschultz over at Bloomberg also makes the point here that there are so many quant signals out there and some of this buying can be those professional you know, robotic traders, frankly, the computers, rather than tons of retail traders alone. GameStop, one of the big stories of the day, so too is Paramount. Those shares up about 7%, and so too were those glitches that we saw on the NYSE earlier today. We're now learning that the NYSE has decided uh, to bust some of those trades, including the ones on Berkshire Hathaway. That basically means that if you got stopped out, either on limit up or limit down, well, whatever losses you had in that, well, you're going to have to eat them. All right, we get the closing bells here in New York on this Monday afternoon. A bit of a turnaround from where we were just about an hour or so ago. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is still going to end the day in the red, though well off the lows of the day, down 115 points or about three-tenths of a percent. The S&P 500, though, flipping from red to green, is going to finish higher by about six points or a tenth of a percent. Similar story for the Nasdaq Composite, up about 94 points or about six tenths of a percent. And the Russell 2000 still holding in the red, though once again off the lows of the day, a loss on the day of five tenths of one percent. All right, as Romain just uh, laid out, uh, those major equity averages. The S&P 500, though, even though it squeezed out a gain of about six points, nonetheless, most names are majority of the names in the S&P 500 lower today, Scarlett. 133 names losing some ground 169 to the upside one unchanged yeah but the ones that are gaining are among the biggest companies you look at the sector performances and there's the pie pretty mixed as carol was just telling us but tech which is the heaviest weight of sector up one percent led by nvidia led by micron led by oracle uh, then you have healthcare services up about seven tenths of one percent and communication services the third best performer gaining about half of one percent Energy, the real laggards here, as uh, all 22 members are down, falling in line with oil. All right, let's get to some of the individual gainers. GameStop, I had to do it, up 75% at its highs today, finishing the day with a 21% gain. You know the story. We've all been covering it. Uh, the Reddit account that drove the meme stock mania back in 2021 appeared to be taking a $116 million position in the video game retailer. So there was a lot of activity, uh, certainly, on that one. Paramount also. Did you, see, and did you see the news, though, that the journal had? Just yeah, we just talked about this. We just talked about, just talked about yeah. it. That E-Trade, right, considering uh, basically telling Keith Gillick can no longer use the platform. From their concern about potential stock manipulation, manipulation, according to those familiar. So, yeah, kind of following that one, and we'll see where it goes. Um, back to some of the gainers. Uh, Paramount up about seven and a half percent. Skydance Media. Uh, this is the one led by David Ellison, Larry Ellison's son, planning to offer twenty-three dollars a share uh, to investors in Paramount's voting stock as a part of a plan to merge. I just feel like, will somebody just do a deal already? But nonetheless, Paramount gets to move <laughs> a lot uh, as the headlines continue to uh, come out. Up seven and a half percent. Autodesk, uh, this is the number four gainer in the S&P 500, up about 4.5%, uh, soaring after the company reassigned its CFO, uh, a move aimed at resolving an internal accounting investigation that delayed filings for weeks. Should point out, no financial statements will be restated or adjusted following the results of that investigation by the company uh, board's audit committee. And then just one more, I had to mention NVIDIA up another 5%, pretty much closing at its best levels of the session. This is among your top gainers in both the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, the CEO coming out, uh, making some AI announcements in Taiwan. A lot of news continues to uh, all things NVIDIA. All right, 11 50 a share right now. That was the close. Is, then we get a stock split, right, that goes into effect next week. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yep. Still Ten for one, right? Yeah, Ten I hope for one. So. Yep. Wow. That's what they okay. Do. 
Um, hey, Scarlett mentioned energy under pressure today. Uh, Chevron, my first decliner on the day today, down close to 3%. I did watch uh, oil companies uh, and shares of energy companies after the price of oil tumbled following OPEC Plus unexpectedly rolling out a plan to restore some production to the market this year. It adds to the bearish momentum that crude has been experiencing for months. We saw energy uh, energy players move lower today, including shares of Chevron. Also, uh, some M&A news in the waste management space. I'm watching shares of waste management, which did fall today on the news uh, that the company has agreed to buy the medical waste disposal company Stericycle for about $5.8 billion in cash. Shares of uh, waste management fell by 4.5%. It is one of the biggest acquisitions in the waste management sector, and uh, waste management will now be the largest trash hauler or continue to be the largest trash hauler in the U.S. Uh, tractor supply shares falling the most in uh, more than a year. It was the S&P 500's worst performer on a percentage basis today, all because of a note from Loop Capital's Anthony Chakumba, who says that a widening price gap versus competitors and the stock's lofty valuation raised concern. Shares fell 6.2%. What happened is Loop Capital did this study, and they found that tractor supply is on average 8.5% more expensive compared uh, with March. Uh, and uh, that by itself is not concerning, but with the stock up 33% so far this year, uh, and it's trading at a significant premium to historical levels, he's concerned that shares are becoming priced for near perfection. We did see shares fall by 6.2%. Have you ever been in a tractor supply, Tim? I have <laughs> not been in a tractor <laughs> supply, but do you remember a few years ago when this company was kind of like all the rage? Because yes, I do. For some, <laughs> it was kind of yes, during the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. People were tired but, of making bread, and they were just yeah. driving around tractors. Is that bread. Oh around? gosh. I've been to tractor supply Carol competitors. competitors. Carol Clearly, you're such a city slicker, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> New York City. Yeah, you know, hey, not like, not like actually, a salt of the earth Midwesterners. <laughs> I've actually driven a big caterpillar tractor. So at their proving, I guess their proving ground. Proving ground. Wow. Something like that. that was on assignment. <laughs> Can you please post? that video on Twitter? I will. Yes, thank you. It was a lot of Okay, guys, we're getting off the rails. We're going to talk about the bid in the bond market as well here. Uh, though I did believe Tim was a tractor guy. I'm a little disappointed to hear it. Uh, in the bond market, we did have a bid where we didn't have one in the stock market. The two-year yield at 481. You saw that move even more pronounced at the further end of the curve. People really buying on to duration today. The 10-year yield under 440, 439, a 10 basis point move. Same goes for the 30-year yield. You saw 10 basis point move. Listen, guys, although you did see some exuberance here in the bond market after that ISM data, you also have to understand that some of the parts of the yield curve have been more inverted today yeah. than they were on Friday, which has been really interesting given how many steepeners have been bought, Romain. Yeah. All right. Well, this is, uh, of course, uh, going to be a potentially busy week. Uh, when we start to get some key economic data toward the ends of the week, we get an ECB decision in the middle of the week. And I had tried uh, earlier this morning to text Carol Masser about this, but she didn't respond to any of my texts. What's you got to call her. Yeah. No. I mean, how am I supposed to coordinate no, the show? No, actually, don't call me. First, you have to text me that you're going to call me. I have to text you first that I'm going to call you? There, <laughs> there are apparently rules. Uh, who knew that phone etiquette or phone texting etiquette has become a thing? But apparently, there are a lot of people who are like, don't call me. First, you have to text me that you're going to call me, and then you can call me. It's a thing. Yeah. Oh. You guys might not be surprised to find this, according to the Wall Street Journal, which cited some polling from YouGov and some other sources, that it kind of depends on the generation. The younger folks, the uh, Gen Z folks, uh, do not like to call they prefer texting yeah but i mean texting just takes too long the call is so, so much have more you guys, direct what? have you guys seen the voice memo thing what? that is huge in other countries now yes people voice are memo sending what's big but it's not here what do you mean it, they're huge <laughs> huge in other countries like my friends who live in europe are sending me memos on whatsapp like where they're talking to their well, phone that's so, what i was so, gonna say yeah so this is the, when did this pop up because i just started getting all these like a few months ago yeah it's like I don't, big I in don't europe know what's happening but the question is, how many messages do you guys have in your Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Signal accounts as well? <laughs> it's confidential. <laughs> kind of crazy. Kind yeah. of crazy. Uh, well, yeah, the good thing is I haven't called anyone since uh, 1995. But uh, <laughs> we get back to this other thing, too. Uh, you know, there was another story that I was keeping my eyes on, guys, in all seriousness. And this actually I had to do with Airbnb. And mm -hmm. this sort of there's this step up that they've taken uh, to sort of fight a lot of these sort of local laws that are really trying to clamp down on the sharing. And it sort of has a reminder, uh, a kind of a reminiscent of what we saw with TikTok when they were uh, facing the ban and they were just going straight to the people. Let, let me show you just how valuable we are and everything that we're doing to help folks out. Yeah, it's interesting. 
interesting, right, to see these hosts basically forming, what, advocacy groups, right, to kind of make their fight um, against some of the laws that are pushing back, certainly when it comes to kind of having Airbnbs, if you will, in their neighborhoods. But it's being helped along by Airbnb. They're kind of providing them with the infrastructure what? and giving them tips. Wait, what? No. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah, giving them a little bit of professional guidance. How about that? All right. That's it. Yeah. I think. That's I think that's. It. I was that trying it? to figure out. Speechless? Can I? Can I? Can I call you guys without texting? Is it okay? Um, I'll. I'll always. Yeah, take I mean, you call. can always I call. I mean, Whether he'll pick up right. is another question. Right. This is. This is. <laughs> wait. This is Romain. Wait. Oh, master. No, I'm gonna put it down. <laughs> All right, guys. That's a wrap. Our cross-platform radio, TV, YouTube, Bloomberg Originals. We're done with Monday. Almost. We will see you again. Same time. Same place tomorrow.